All right, so in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the top mistakes that I find snake keepers make while caring for their pet snakes. All right, so let's just jump right into it. The first big mistake that people make is not using thermometers with their heating pads or other heating elements. Not using a thermometer is especially dangerous for heating pads, and that's because these pads do not have a set temperature. Once you plug these in, they will just continue heating and they won't stop. Pads that you usually buy from the store don't have any controller built into them, which is why you need to buy uh, thermometers, which you can't really see it, but I'll post a picture. So heat pads can heat up from anywhere between 90 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius, which is very hot and they will not stop heating. And plus the ambient air of the room and just the heat that's being collected, it's just not a good thing. So yeah, you must use a thermostat with your heat pads unless you want melted um, plastic, if you're using bins, uh, or if you want cracked glass on your nice enclosure. Uh, because these can actually crack glass or your snake will end up with a completely burnt belly which is not good so what a thermostat does essentially is it works kind of like a light dimmer controls the amount of electricity flowing to the heating elements and once the temperature is reached that you've set on the thermostat um, it will shut off your heating pads and it'll work perfectly so that is the first big mistake that snake owners or even really reptile owners make is not using a thermostat so the next mistake that I find snake keepers make is feeding live prey unsupervised. Now it's always recommended to feed frozen thawed for all of your uh, snakes because it's just more humane and it is safer. In extreme cases, it is okay to feed live. Uh, that's if the snake has been off of feed for a very long time and it's looking really thin. It is okay to try live as a last resort. However, there are very irresponsible pet owners out there that will just open up their snake's cage and throw in a live rodent and close up the enclosure. So that is the biggest mistake that anyone can make because if your snake is not hungry or is just not feeling like it wants to eat, uh, that rodent will actually later on become hungry and start eating your snake. And uh, this is not something that's way out there. It's happened so many times. I post pictures, but they are gonna be pretty graphic. So this is your warning. So yeah, pretty much if you're going to feed live, make sure you supervise. If you do not supervise, you're going to be uh, really causing bodily harm to your snake. Your snake will be eaten alive, which is not a good thing. And that will lead to infections and vet bills and even a dead snake. So just do not feed live unless you have to and watch your snake when they're eating. Oh, another mistake that I find is still around in the reptile hobby is using heating rocks. Now, heating rocks are just terrible products. In my opinion, they're useless, absolutely useless, and they are not worth sacrificing the health of your snake to have a heating rock. Just buy a heating pad. The problem with heat rocks is they are really well known for causing serious burns in many reptiles and injury, which often leads to infection and worse. Due to the uneven heating and drastic temperature spikes, which means that it can either be really cold or just shoot up in temperature really hot, uh, I just recommend you completely stay away from heating rocks. That is a big mistake that people make. And just because a pet store is selling a product does not mean that product is safe. The pet stores do not care about the health of your animal. They just want to sell you stuff. They just want to get your money and that's it. They don't care about the animal. They don't care what's going to happen once the animal leaves that door. They just want your money. The next mistake, which is really usually done on accident, but it is a big mistake to make, is forgetting to latch your snake's cage. So like you see, there's latches. If you have an exoterra, there's a latch to open and close the front doors. Um, there's also latches on the top, so you got to make sure those are closed. Now, this is a big mistake. I don't have to explain why, but I am going to, is because your snake will literally just pop the top open and slither out. Because snakes are actually really amazing escape artists, so you're going to want to make sure you always check their enclosures before you go to bed uh, or before you leave the room that they're always closed. A couple years ago with my first corn snake ever, uh, I did forget to latch my exoterra and the corn snake got out. So we didn't find it for two to three days, but then I ended up finding it coiled up in a trash can in the under part of a trash can. Um, so I got luck. I got lucky because I was able to find my snake, but you just want to take the, the step, the extra precaution, even if you're really tired, check that all of your enclosures are closed. All right. So now for the last mistake, I think snake owners make is overfeeding. It's really easy to overfeed a snake, but snakes are cold blooded. They are slow metabolizing uh, reptiles. They really don't need food that often. By that often, I mean probably two times a week for babies, once a week for juveniles, and then once every 13 to 14 days for adults. And the reason new snake owners overfeed their pet 
without realizing it is because snakes are opportunistic feeders, which means they will always eat if food is offered. So just because you're, you're thinking the snake is taking it, it's hungry, it's not that. It's because in the wild, they will eat anything they find because they don't know when their next meal is coming. But in captivity, we're able to feed them on regular schedules, which is hard for new snake owners because they probably don't know about the, the schedule and the routines. But you just have to find a schedule and a routine that works for you and your pet and make sure that they're not getting too overweight. Uh, so that's the end of this video. The last point I would really want to make is that snake obesity is very real. So yeah, I hope you've seen those snakes. Um, while they might look pretty funny, it's not funny at all. They're literally suffocating in their own body. They are like a, a tube of fat, uh, which is not good. So if you have an obese snake, don't worry about it. Just cut back the feedings, maybe up the activity a little bit, uh, but stop overfeeding your snakes. That is a really bad mistake to make. Anyways, hope you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully next time I'll have some snakes out. It's because they've all eaten today. That's why they're not out, even Cruz. Uh, so I don't like to take them out the day that they've eaten. I just like to let them relax and chill. So anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one.